essentially, Mrs. Uh, the role of a barrister is to... Represent you in court with professionalism and sensitivity. I think you've just moved my... It's my job. Is to advise you uh, without telling you, obviously. I mean, uh, it's your decision. I'm here to help, uh, if you want me to. Uh, but above all, a, a barrister is here to discuss the question of fees. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Vince. Any post? Nothing much. When you say nothing much, Vince, you are acknowledging the existence of some, albeit not a great quantity, of post? In a manner of speaking, sir. Yeah, thank you for that. And within that post, uh, were there any letters containing checks for me? No, sir. No? But you have received something, you acknowledged that earlier, something not entirely unrelated to my outstanding fees. Well... Might I suggest you have, in fact, received a letter on my behalf which does at least mention money? It mentions money. Yeah. Well, in that case, Vince, can I put it to you that your earlier statement that you hadn't received a letter mentioning money was a previous inconsistency? You've been entered in the Reader's Digest prize draw, sir. <laughs> I didn't think it was worth mentioning. Well, it is worth mentioning. Somebody's got to win. <laughs> so, since you mentioned the subject of money, sir, would it be a convenient moment to mention the clerk's fees owing in chambers? Well, don't look at me. It's not my fault clerk's fees are owing. Look at the junior members of these chambers. When the Labour Party want to recruit a couple of barristers, they get Tony and Cherie. When we do the same thing, we get Hillary and Ruth. A nail-biter and a bedwetter. <laughs> and Ruth. <laughs> Which is why I was absolutely right to place that advertisement for new members of Chambers. Have we had any responses yet? None yet, sir. None? But it's been in a week. Oh, I suppose a lot of people do go on holiday in October. <laughs> Morning, John. I wish she would. Morning. <laughs> Forgot buildings. Oh, Mr. Drew, very well indeed. I'm delighted to hear it's still running nicely. Yeah, I always say, by remaining, you can't go wrong. <laughs> uh, let me just check the screen. Yeah. Yeah, we have got somebody available. Uh, would you bear with me a minute, sir? Uh, did you want a word, miss? Oh, no, no. Um... It's just I got Daniel Drew from Wollaston's on oh, the... Oh, yes, uh... Daniel. Yes, I did that factory accident case for him. Oh, it went very well. Oh. Even he agreed we should have won. <laughs> Does he want to speak to me? No, he wants to chat to me. Oh, right. Right, I'll, um... I'll see you later. Oh, again, sir. So sorry about that. Uh, so, uh, what's the amount of claim, sir? How long do you anticipate the trial will last? Yeah. No, no, I quite understand why you wouldn't want a woman barrister for that kind of case. Yeah, yeah, yeah particularly based on your past experience, yeah. Yeah, I agree. A lady would be totally inappropriate. <laughs> ah, of course. Hmm, bang on. <laughs> what time's the mid morning post arriving? <laughs> Middle of the morning, sir. <laughs> ah, they're still doing it that way. Mm. Morning, John. Morning, Vince. Do you really have to dress like that? Ah, my new cycling shorts. Lycra. Lycra. Isn't that supposed to accentuate your lunchbox, sir? Well, if it is, you can't be very hungry, Hilary. <laughs> very good, sir. What lunchbox? Oh, circulars. A bill. Another prize draw. Why is nobody responding to our advert about new members of Chambers? What advert? Oh, I was going to tell you about that. Yes, it was a decision of the executive committee. What executive committee? Yeah, I was going to tell you about that as well. And the one that was created about three weeks ago by an executive decision taken by me as head of chambers in committee, as it were. In committee with who? In committee with whom? <laughs> well, um, Vince and I talked about it, and I think I may have mentioned it to Ruth on Pethel. And whom is on this committee? Well, let's see. There's me uh, and Vince. I see. So... I wasn't even considered for this committee. It wasn't like that. You were considered, briefly, and then passed over. <laughs> so you've got nothing to complain about. Well, I'm not agreeing to new members of Chambers. Well, it's too late now. I've already placed the advert. <laughs> Isn't everything you put here a misrepresentation? No. No, Hillary. Legally, it's only a misrepresentation if people find out. 
Well, I'm not surprised you haven't had a single response. Look, a lot of people go on holiday in October. Everybody knows that. <laughs> so this one isn't a circular. It's a response to the advert. Looks quite promising. Mm, look. Edward Madden. Eaton and a first-class law degree from Cambridge. Now, this is exactly the sort of person who'll bring in a lot of well-paid work. Well, I don't see why we need any more members of Chambers. We've got one case coming up. The George Yardis credit card fraud. I, I got you onto that, and it wasn't easy explaining to the client why you put QC after your name when you weren't one. I explained. That was a simple word processing error on my notepaper and compliment slips. And your business card, sir. Shut up. <laughs> Ruth, I'm going to talk to you. John's going to interview someone, a barrister, about becoming a new member of Chambers, and he hasn't consulted either of us. Well, that's part of the course in this set. Not that I'm concerned about another barrister competing for my work and impressing clients and winning cases. I just genuinely don't think we need anyone in Chambers who can do all of that. Do you honestly think that anyone seeing John Fuller Carp and that sexist dinosaur clerk would want to join this place? Do you know, I have just heard Vince on the phone to one of my solicitors saying that they'd be better off with a male barrister. Oh, no. Oh, I mean, that's totally undermining. Men! I'm sorry I don't include you in that, Hilary. <laughs> I'm going to tackle him about it. Oh, yes, you must confront him. I would, if he said I wasn't up to doing a case as a man. I mean, who the hell does he think he is sabotaging my practice? I did not spend years at law school to play sweet little girly to some jumped-up Essex barrow boy with a Rolex and a second-hand Mercedes. <laughs> we employ him. Not that you would know it. Oh, and all this Miss and Madam stuff. It's crap, because we all jump if he wants a favour for one of his friends. Do you remember that I defended his local vicar on obtaining property by deception? Oh, I got him off. But where did all that lead roofing really come from, Hilary? You never really did believe his story about the three wise men, did you? I mean, it's not as if we need him. OK, maybe in the early years, but I have got my own practice. People come to me because they know I am bloody good. And people come to me as well. <laughs> to hell with it. I am just going to have to have it out with him. Yes, and I'm going to sit in on that interview. Sorry, I'm entitled. Sir, miss, everything all right? I thought I had some banging. Fine, thank you, Vince. You look well. How are the builders getting on? Oh, it never ends. They finished the snooker room. Very late in the conservatory, though. Oh, no. They <laughs> such pains, can't they, builders? Oh, it must be such an incredible upheaval for you. <laughs> I'll get on there. That was not the right moment. No. <laughs> he here. He's in reception. He looks pretty aloof, if you ask me. Aloof? That's breeding, Hilary. <laughs> no one looks into the middle distance like the English aristocracy. It's wonderful the way they make you feel so insignificant. Chaffer <laughs> cakes? Uh, they're from my tin and they're for Edward. <laughs> Mr Edward Madden, sir. Edward, how very, very good of you to come. Do have a seat. And you are? Uh, John Fuller Carp, um, uh, head of Cambridge. Ah. I'm most delighted to meet you. Very, very kind of you to say so. May I introduce my two colleagues, Hilary Tripping and my senior clerk, Vincent Griffin? You've met already. How do you do? Hilary's fine, thank you. Perhaps we could begin um, with a few uh, general questions. When could you start? <laughs> well, right away, I suppose. I'll just make a note of that. Could I just ask uh, about the last six years? You say you've been in America. Aren't you a bit out of touch with practice here? Well, I suppose you could say that. I'd but... have thought that being in America would have given you an in-depth knowledge of a comparative legal system and a valuable insight into English law. Indeed. Yes, I was going to say that I have returned hungry to build a practice in a forward-thinking and expanding set of chambers. I now really feel it's my destiny. Ah, la forza del destino. <laughs> the force of one's destination. <laughs> Wonderful. It's exactly what we're looking for. Sorry to butt in, but uh, there is this uh, problem about your references. I didn't see it as a problem, Hilary. No, 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 I quite understand. The barrister who knew me best when I was in practice here was the late Lord Grieve of Horsley, QC. Did you know him? Uh, Lord Grieve? Um, no, well, not to speak to, no, but in a general way, very, very much so. Do you have a cake? <laughs> Thank you. My parents divorced when I was very young, and Lord Grieve was like a father to me. I don't think I'll ever find anyone to replace him. That's a very moving story, son. <laughs> What about other references? I, I think we've covered that ground, Hilary. Well, um, I think that we've seen enough of your estimable qualities and qualifications for me to make an objective decision um, as a group. Uh, thank you very, very much for coming. I'm very grateful to you all for seeing me. This way, sir. 
Well, pretty impressive, I'd say. Well, I thought there was something odd about him. Odd? Odd? What is this job doing to you, Hillary? The bank agent was in good faith. He's a barrister. We're all members of the bar, Hillary. That makes us part of a brotherhood with some women in it. <laughs> Edward. How are you settling in? Very well, thank you, John. I thought you might like to share with me That's to begin with. Extremely kind of you. Uh, got everything you need? Yes. Uh, well, just waiting for my new chair. Ah, yes. Um, I spoke to Vince earlier. Uh, he's uh, spoken to his regular supplier this morning. The supplier is talking to his uh, contact at the manufacturer's this afternoon, and Vince will be taking delivery at the rear of the pub later tonight. <laughs> Good. Good. <laughs> Anything else okay? Yes. Uh, well, there is one thing, but um, perhaps I shouldn't mention it. Oh, no, no, of course. No, 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 it's silly. It's a, it's a trifle. Uh, forget I said anything. No, Edward, please. We uh, pride ourselves in the chambers on our capacity for sharing concerns. Oh, so kind, John. No, it's just that, well, some of my funds are still tied up in America. And to cut a long trawl through Wall Street short, my liquidity is temporarily a touch light, and with the first month's chamber's rent due... I see. I, I wouldn't normally dream of asking, but, uh, well, it's only 1500 and uh, my fees should start rolling in pretty soon. You want me to lend you the money? <laughs> is that too awful? You want me to lend you the money? <laughs> yes. I can probably ring up my broker and get him to call in a position on the long bond, but it takes a while. Uh, no, 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 uh, uh, of course not, of course not. <laughs> I, it, it isn't going to put you out, is it? I mean, uh, if it does, forget it. I mean, you've been kind enough already. No, no, Edward, please, please. Um, I always let my brokers wait till the optimum moment uh, to sell. <laughs> I'm most grateful. Could you put the, uh, make the cheque payable to E. Madden? Yes, 1,500, wasn't it? It was that pounds or dollars. <laughs> <laughs> You're so kind. No. No, it says March 1973. <laughs> oh, I always get that wrong. <laughs> you know, I think it's really important for us to get together from time to time, get out of chambers and just have a chat. Very kind of you to invite me, miss. Well, what about a drink? What can I get you, Vince? A pint of lager? Uh, I don't know, miss. I'll probably end up having a steak, so I think I prefer a burgundy. What about a Gevry Chambertin? I'm not too crucial about it, but I generally prefer the Clos Prieur at the Chanchet. Good <laughs> wine it is. Oh, it's nice, isn't it, just getting out of chambers and out of work mode? It's very relaxing. You're an Arsenal supporter, aren't you? Chelsea, season ticket holder. All right. Up the Reds! <laughs> <laughs> Tell me something, Vince. Um, when you look at me, what do you see? Very attractive young woman with... Let me stop you there, if I may, Vince. You see, when I meet a person, I genuinely often don't even notice whether they're a man or a woman. Oh, hello. <laughs> Which I think is a very good thing, and I know that's how you treat us. Miss, have you been listening in at the clerk's room? No, absolutely not. What you say in the clerk's room on the phone to solicitors that I've done work for is confidential. And I respect that very much. It's just that I did have a call a little while back where I suggested that a woman barrister wasn't up to a particular case. I did not know that. I've been struggling with my conscience about it, but now I think if a man can do it, why not a woman? I think I was being a bit of a sexist dinosaur. <laughs> I don't think that's entirely fair at all, I mean. Sometimes you just get these things wrong. I want to put it right. I think I can still get the case for you if you want it. Well, you surprised me by bringing this up as an issue. I mean, I hadn't thought about it. Um, but OK, yes, I would. I mean, I know I could do it, or any case, as well as a man could. I'm really pleased that's sorted, miss. Anyway, let's just forget about work. We've got lots to talk about. <laughs> Click here to enjoy the pictures. What are you up to, Vince? <laughs> uh, 
Just a bit of background on some personal injury cases, sir. <laughs> What's wrong with her? <laughs> Not a lot at the moment, but um, those implants can go terribly wrong. <laughs> Could be a very lucrative source of work, sir. Yes, <clears throat> talking of work, has Mr Madden had much work in? Early days yet, sir. Yes, of course. Only thing he's done is uh, a short advice on a sale of goods case. Uh, Actually, I was going to have a word with him about the billing. Oh, were you? Oh, well, I was just about to go on to my room. Um, I'll come with you. Yes? This is a convenient moment, sir. Yes, Vincent, come in. Morning. Hello, John. I just want to have a word with you about this time sheet. I couldn't help noticing, sir, you put down two hours for this ten-page advice. That's right. Uh, could I ask how long it actually took you? Two hours? Oh, right. I thought there'd been a mistake. <laughs> uh, no problem, uh, Edward. Uh, Vincent will calculate the appropriate number of uh, chargeable hours. Yes, sir, no problem. I'll put down six and a half hours. <laughs> but two hours is the proper amount? Uh, in real time, yes, but of course, chargeable time is different. I mean, I'm only 59 years old in real time, but if you add up all my chargeable hours, I'm currently 234. <laughs> I only did two hours' work. You've lost me. Uh, let me explain. <laughs> let me explain, Edward. You could, could you not conceivably have done two hours, two minutes? I suppose so. You see, we, we're charging units of an hour, so if you go over the hour, that's another unit, so that's three hours. And you were probably interrupted a couple of times the phone, perhaps. I might have been. Oh, well, there you are. See, that's the short fall. You see, you start a new unit after each interruption, build in a notional <laughs> three interruptions, and that's six. And if it's an even number, we round up to the nearest half hour for VAT. So, six and a half. VAT? Vince's additional time. <laughs> that's the time it takes me to add up the time. <laughs> Hello, Hilary. Vince, you don't think I'm lacking confidence, do you? Not at all, sir. Don't I say to you, every year it's just a question of winning a few cases. Or even one case. <laughs> I say to you, every year, without fail, every year you just need to win a few cases. Or one case. <laughs> yes, Is it just me, Vince, or have you noticed anything strange about Edward Madden? Yeah, now you mention it, I did have a call from a solicitor this morning who briefed him. Apparently he told some client who was happily paying privately he was entitled to legal aid. Halved his fees. Oh, but that's written in the Code of Conduct. I know. But he acted on it. Now, that's <laughs> taken it too far. <laughs> That's nice, sir. Grateful client. No. Uh, is Mr. Manson in? Uh, yes, yes, sir. And he, he asked me to give you the invoice for his new chair. Said he'd talk to you about his temporary cash flow situation. Yes, we didn't mention the chair. How much is it? 850. Oh, well, if it's under a tenner, I don't mind so much. 850. 850 quid? It's made of calf's leather. It's got hydraulics in that. Um, tell me, Vince, has Madden had any fees in yet? Uh, none yet, sir, but as you say, it is early days. Well, never mind early days. I'm 1,500 quid out of pocket. Can't we get him in on some big, well-paid trial? Well, the only big trial coming up in Chambers is the George Yarges fraud, and uh, that's already assigned to you and Mr Trippin. Yes. Where is Hilary? <laughs> ah, John, can I... Carry on. Oh. I marvel at you, Harry. <laughs> Do you? Oh, yeah, yeah. What are you working on? The George Yardis credit card case. Ah, I was right. I knew you'd get on top of that. Well, I... My God, you've come on in recent years. Your competence, your self-assurance, it's extraordinary. Is it? Yes. <laughs> yes, this is rather humbling for me, but, you know... There is very little I could say or do that would add anything to the outstanding way you'd run the George Yardis case. Which is why I've decided to withdraw and let you run it on your own. What? Well, I, I don't see why you should do that. Uh, I, I mean, I, I am confident about winning, obviously, but well, you're far more experienced in criminal work. It's so clever. I don't know how you do it. What? <laughs> well, the way you give the impression that you haven't the faintest idea what you're doing, that um, all the facts and papers in the case are all jumbled up in your head, and the way you manage to seem that you'll be the last person to believe you'll win. It's brilliant. <laughs> Do I really seem that way? Oh, yes, my God, yes, to me, yeah. Oh, yeah I, mean, I laugh when I hear other barristers talk about you. <laughs> You've certainly got them fooled. <laughs> what do they say? Oh, nothing. Well, you know, the usual stuff about uh, losing all the documents in the case, uh, <laughs> making speeches for the wrong side, <laughs> letting witnesses cross-examine you. I mean, <laughs> 
You know, it'll give me a lot of satisfaction to think about what they'll say when they see you running a really big case with a bit of publicity like Georgiadis. Well, I, 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 I'm sure I, I, I could do it on my own and do it well, but... Uh, nope, no, nope. you carry on. No, this is your case and yours alone. You'll be out there, in court, on your own. And rightly so. <laughs> Vince, I, I, I can't do the Georgiadis case. I don't understand, sir. Well, I, 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 I once went to Greece. Uh, uh, terrible taverna. Uh, moussaka. I, I just... Uh, I wouldn't be objective. I'll get the papers. Hmm. Out by four seconds. <laughs> Uh, good morning, gentlemen. May I introduce the new junior in the case, uh, Edward Madden. Edward Cyril Hines, our esteemed instructing solicitor. Good morning. And this is Yanis Georgiadis, former head of the Monkfish Credit Card Company, <laughs> and also, if I may say so, now most cruelly and unjustly charged as the defendant in this uh, case. Very kind of you to say so, Mr. Fullercar. Edward was a scholar at Eton and gained a first-class honours degree in law from Cambridge University, so he'll be an invaluable addition to our team. <laughs> now, as I say, in my view, these charges are quite monstrous. There's scarcely a thread, or a scintilla, or even a fraction of a scintilla, of evidence linking you with these crimes. Could I say something at this point? Absolutely, Edward. I told you, never stops thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I read every document in the files last night. Yes, yeah, I, of course, have done several times. And I'm afraid to say that you are clearly guilty on all charges. What? <laughs> Edward, surely you mean clearly not guilty? No. No, the police have recorded telephone conversations, have confiscated incriminating private correspondence in your hand, and have 12 former employees, all of whom will say that you told them what you were doing was illegal. <laughs> yes, but when you add all that up, what does it actually mean? <laughs> if you plead not guilty, you will be found guilty and receive a far higher sentence. Plead guilty. It will be quick, cheap, and you will have the satisfaction of having salved your conscience and repaid society. So you think I should plead guilty? Yes. No. Oh, you think I should plead not guilty? No. Y yes. Uh, what Edward means is yes and no, but far more yes than no. Uh, wholly yes, in fact, and not no at all. Is that right? No. Uh, yes, but in, the, uh, in the very positive sense of that word, very much the yes aspect of no. <laughs> Uh, would you excuse me for a moment, Edward? Can I just talk to you outside? <laughs> what are you doing? If he pleads guilty, we won't get paid for the trial. I'm just telling the client the truth. I'm sorry, I don't understand. <laughs> it's my duty as a barrister. Surely you don't believe that a good lawyer can also be a dishonest man? That is not the ethical question here. The question is whether he can also be a rich man. <laughs> You cannot represent someone you know to be guilty. Why? You're a party to misleading the court. Yes, but only in the legal sense. My client is waiting, Mr. Fulacar. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. So, are you saying I should go guilty or not guilty? Mr. Georgiadis, my advice and that of my junior is clear, consistent and unequivocal. If you are guilty, you should plead guilty. Yeah, but as you're clearly not, then you shouldn't and you won't. I mean, you can't and you shan't. <laughs> Excuse me. Mr. Martin, ridiculous as it sounds in the world of modern litigation, uh, there are some people who think that a woman barrister can't do a case every bit as well as a man. So can I simply professionally and efficiently assure you that I can do everything and anything that my male colleagues can do? That's great. So tell me, in your own words, Mr. Martin, why you're so determined to pursue this claim? Well, the consultant said that the circumcision itself was a simple operation. <laughs> But, well, it's like Rabbi Bloom said. you just got to look at what they've done. <laughs> yeah, but I want the judge to see me as an individual, not just a statistic. No. <laughs> um, no, I understand, uh, and you're right, but, um, look, I think that maybe a male barrister might be more suited to handle your case. <laughs> Where is that bloody half-wit? Uh, Mr Trippin popped out a little earlier. Not him, the other one, Madden. What makes you think he's a halfway? Load that man's IQ by 1%, you'd have to water him. <laughs> he told Georgie Artis to plead guilty, pass up the chance of a privately paid three-month trial. 
That's worse than stupid, sir. That's perverting the course of earnings. <laughs> I wanted to have a word with you about him anyway, sir. This morning, I caught him on the phone to a citizen's advice bureau offering to do a case for free. What? Apparently, that's when you give legal advice, but you don't receive money for it. <laughs> well, that's it. He's got to go. John, I cannot be a party to the way you're running this defence. I'm withdrawing from the case. That's not all you're withdrawing from, mate. I want you out of these chambers before you bankrupt the lot of us. Hillary, you help me. John's trying to get rid of me just because I try and tell the client the truth. Don't listen to him, Hillary. As a matter of fact, I shan't listen to him. Yeah, there you are, you see, madam. That's what these chambers are about. Loyalty to fellow members. Now, sod off. <laughs> you can't get rid of me. I'll take you to the Bar Council. As a matter of fact, I've just been to the Bar Council. And I'm sorry, but I have some rather disturbing news. Hillary, we're dealing with a crisis here. Can't this wait? I went to the Bar Council to check you out. Only you don't exist. I knew it. Your timesheets, this truth business. I knew you weren't a real lawyer. <laughs> when, I, when I got back from America, some of my papers got mislaid. The Bar Council had heard of an Edward Madden, a former timeshare salesman and Butlin's redcoat. <laughs> I never wore that. A man who has passed himself off as a barrister and been taken on in three sets of chambers in the last ten years. All right, I admit it. You see... I'm fascinated by justice. Oh, well, that settles it. There's no place for you in these chambers. Out. <laughs> Vince will send your stuff on. Can I take... Not the chair. <laughs> oh, Hillary, well done. My word, what resolution and strength of character. You see, Vince, this is the newfound confidence in Hillary I've been telling everybody about. Thank you. Yes, armed with qualities like these, I can see you tackling anything, any case, fearlessly, even fraud. Not the George Yardis case. Well, it's very, very good of you to offer. I shall be needing a strong and insightful junior. Well, is Edward here? I dismissed him. Bollocks! Man was a complete fraud. I saw through him immediately, of course. I need a male barrister to take over my conference. Well, you can't have Hillary's doing George Yardis with me. Look, I'm professionally embarrassed. Well, you should have thought about that before you became a woman. <laughs> Look, I, I am feeling a bit more confident, but uh, the George Yardis case is very complex, uh, and I think I'd like to do something a bit more... Uh, why don't I do Ruth's conference? And if you still need a junior uh, on the Georgiades case, uh, surely Ruth can take over. Oh, all right. Great. <laughs> good. What sort of case is yours, Ruth? A personal injury. Oh, good. I like those. Uh, kind. Oh, well, it's pretty straightforward. The client will explain. Excellent. <laughs> Could I uh, just say thank you to both of you for being so supportive over this little rough patch, <laughs> getting my confidence going again? <laughs> Well, that all seems to have sorted itself out quite nicely. <laughs> OK, Ruth, uh, just to bring you up to date on George Yardis, I tried till I was blue in the face to get him to plead guilty, but it looks like we're stuck with a long and expensive trial. Although, actually, now I come to think of it, in a sensitive case like this, I think that the influence of a female barrister could well be beneficial. What do you think so? Oh, absolutely. Well, you know the Greeks. They love a bit of totty. <laughs> Chambers is back next Thursday night at the later time of 20 past 10. Next tonight on BBC One, Tony Blair is the guest for Question Time.